is up, beautiful peeps? It is your girl, Nightstar Entertainment, bringing you some more medieval dynasty. I am collecting items for the for the village. Um, I got a lot of sticks. I know that the last time I played this game seems like a while ago. Uh, we were trying to get more people in the village. We made a crap ton of food. Um, so everyone settled. We need more wood more than anything. And we need more people in the village. I need a wife. We need to go do the hanky panky and make her have an heir. I need to talk to the Unigas. Um, I was trying to get into the, the closed beta for the uh, what was he call it? Multiplayer? But life happened. Um, my dog got really sick. Um, she needed surgery. Um, she was my, uh, she is my first dog, so I, um, just everything got out of hand, but she's on a quick go to recovery. Um, I'm <sighs> needed to, uh, stay home for my job today um one i wasn't feeling the greatest um and two after her going to the vet she, she really has some social anxiety um she was i mean i really couldn't even walk away from her she tried to follow me all around the house which is adorable but she's not she's supposed to have like limited movement and everything else um so that she doesn't rupture her sutures or anything like that. So, now I'm at home, I've made sure she's nice and warm and comfy because the doctors have also said that um, she's running under, like she's running cold. So, we got her in the room, bought her a new pet bed, um, bought her some more blankets, bought her some more pillows, got her on us set up. Because, you know, I'm going to do anything I can to go and make sure that this, this fur baby is having a good time. So, that's a thing. I'm heading straight to the Stovia. Every time, I, I check every single wagon <laughs> that I walk past. Y'all, do y'all do that too? I, I think it was like... It was like, even if I have a feeling that I have already gathered the stuff in there, I still have to look. But she's over here. I can't be too loud. Because I said to minimize loud noises, so I'm going to have to behave. But it is uh, pretty much day three. Um, as I'm recording here on August 16th, it is about day three um, after her surgery. And she's doing well, she's recovering, and you know what? She, you know, they gave her a whole bunch of gross medicine. She's not too keen about it. Um, luckily, the my partner uh, dog sits and, and um, pet sits. So someone who also had a, a dog that just undergo has to get a lot of medication on the regular. She gave us um, some pill wraps and the like. And so she's now taking her medicine more easily than it was to try and shove it to the back of her throat. Hello, Rasmir. Are you getting settled? The valley is treating me nicely so far. That's wonderful, Rasmere, but you come at a poor time. My duties as a Castellian await me. Of course, I understand. Is everything alright? Yeah, it's, um, I'm not sure to be honest. There's been a murder. Great, I mean, not for the seas, obviously, but there's all, there's that excitement and mystery the valley has been lacking. Oh, I how I miss being that young and stupid. Hey, don't be too harsh on yourself. You're still plenty stupid. Hmm, I shouldn't be joking about that. I'm an adult and an important figure. Ah, uh, whatever. You wish there to be two bodies instead of one. I, I respect you even more than before. Jokes aside, Rasimir, that's really a serious matter. I won't be able to share more stories with you at the moment, but I believe there is someone you should meet. His name is Sambor. He was one of us, the pack, I mean. 
Are you serious? And he lives here in the valley? That's right. All of them do, actually. Here. A Mark Sambor's house on your map. You should pay him a visit. Great. I'll go there right away. But beware. Calling Sambor friendly is like calling a bee stung... Calling being stung by a bee right in the tip of your manhood pleasant. Oh, I'm sure you're exaggerating. It was part of the reminders, after all. Don't say I didn't warn you. I'll be on my way then. Alright. So we need to go see Sambor. And I didn't see anybody in this town that I really wanted to pick up. But I don't really want to... I am dirty. Fine. Go run around here. There's gotta be a bridge somewhere. It is so foggy. This fog is intense. on Sambor's house, but, um, I was expecting to come across a wolf. I haven't seen one. I was like, did I kill one before I got here? Oh, don't tell me he's asleep. Don't tell me he's in his house asleep. Well, that's not his house. Man, get up! <laughs> I think you're lost, boy. Sorry, I didn't mean to this. Wait a second, look me in the eye. Stop shivering for crying out loud, huh? Black and blue. You're a Orden's fountain, aren't you? Yeah, my name's Rasimir. Must be Sambor then. And how do you know that? I was talking with Unigas. He told me that you were a part of the Reminders as well. Part of the what now? Um, the, the pack? The one with Unigas and Yordan and... I've never heard this idiotic name in my life. Oh, sorry. Maybe I made a mistake. We were called the Undying Fist. Now that's a whole lot better name. You're damn right it is. That's because I came up with it. Everyone loved it. No idea why Unagas lied to you like that. I'm sure he was just jealous about your creativity. Ha! <laughs> of course he was. And not only about that. Anyway, I would love to hear some stories about my uncle and the packs of venture all together. And he's like, boy, if you don't get out of my house talking all this bull in the middle of the night. That's an amazing coincidence, because I would love to spend my time telling the old tales about the crackling fire. Oh my, really? No, leave my property and forget where it is. <laughs> oh, come on, it'll only take a moment. A moment of a moment, really. Just tell me, what was my uncle like? How did you become part of the... The rim... The Undying Fist, and, um... What did you do exactly as the pack? You don't know what we did? Unigas didn't get to that part yet. He's like, all right, it's the middle of the night. All right, child, I guess. I'll guess. I'll enjoy your company for like two seconds. All right, be quiet and try to be less annoying. Where should I begin? Right, it all started when Jordan left his home. He was 18 at the time, if I remember correctly. That clever bastard was always too big of a fish for his birthplace, and he knew that. Left as soon as he could, but cleverness at such a young age always means two things. Big being arrogant and hot-headed. His plan was to set out on a big adventure. That's it. Pretty detailed, huh? A path like that is paved with skeletons of young idiots. But none of them was Jordan. Either way, he was wandering for days. Days soon turned into weeks, and his rations into dust. He was useless as a hunter, back then at least. So berries and mushrooms was all he could get. So obviously, he needed some coins. He came across a manor with orchards so vast they seemed like an ocean. Jordan managed to get some work there. A week of back-breaking labor had passed, Hands were covered in blisters, skin red from the scorching sun, knees pulsating from pain. I must say, you're really an amazing storyteller. I wasn't expecting that. Shut up! Do you want me to finish? Where was I? Oh, right. He was exhausted from all the strenuous work he'd done. Went to the lord of the manor with a smile on his face to collect the payment. His stomach was already full with fantasies of all the delicious treats he was dreaming of buying. And all of that was ruined by the hand of the lord holding a couple of lousy coins. Jordan was furious. That was merely a fraction of the pain he was supposed to acquire. He started shouting at the Lord, demanding justice. Peasants were just flies to the Lord, disgusting, replaceable insects. And what do you do with a fly which buzzes too loudly? Both of the Lord's palms struck Jordan's ears with the strength of an ox. Jordan fell to the ground stunned, and the Lord's guards threw him out of the manor like garbage, stealing that few pathetic coins while doing so, if I may add. 
It wasn't until evening when Iordan regained his hearing, and with it came a fervent thought. Thought of revenge. Your uncle was quite a capable fighter when I met him ten years later, but he wasn't back then. He knew the guards would massacre him if he only came close, so he needed to find another way to fulfill his vengeance. Yordan was always ambitious, but that hatred fueled him like nothing before. And what happened next? What came later was me becoming bored of this conversation. Go away. No way, you can't leave me like this. I can do whatever I want. Scram. I have things to do. What things? I'll do them for you. I'll do anything you want. Just please tell me the whole story. Damn. You're annoying. No, I'm not. See? What an annoying thing to say, okay? You can help me. Seems I won't get rid of you any other way. Just say what needs to be done. You won't regret it. Here, grab this shovel. It's a piece of crap, but it'll do. There are clay deposits behind my house. Go there and dig up some clay for me. On it, boss. <laughs> Yeah, he's definitely like, get out my house, do some manual labor. We have things to do. All right, behind his house. We can do that. Very quick and easy. It was too dark for my liking, so I uh, turned up the brightness. Let's get this over with. How many? He wants five pieces of clay. For us to dig up two. Oh, well, that's easy. We'll dig up one more just to keep our own play. There we go. Jump over this? Alright, he should be back to sleep. Get up! You have it? Here's all the clay you wanted. Will you finish the story now? Alright, alright. So I've already said, Jordan wasn't much of a fighter back then. He didn't have any money nor connections, but he had one thing. An unusual ability. You see, from an early age, Jordan was an exceptionally good liar. No sweaty palms, no voice cracks, no tells, really. Palm, steady breaths, eye contact held all the way. He eventually managed to handle any kind of pressure, even the craziest of situations. But it wasn't that at first. He felt no pressure like No stress at all. It was as natural for him as breathing. I don't think that's a really good thing. He had an absolutely no remorse. I don't think that's a really good thing. He came up with a plan, a plan so immensely moronic and unrealistic that it's really hard to believe that it was worked so perfectly. At first, he convinced the nearby nearby town's tailor to sew him a whole set of clothes worthy of the most wealthy nobleman. The finest of fabrics, silken threads, you name it, horrendously expensive. So how did he manage so how did he manage to afford it, you may ask? It's simple. He didn't pay for it. So he stole it. I said no such thing. Jordan wasn't a thief. Not in the traditional meaning of the word at least. Apart from that, did I finish the damn story? Ahem. While wearing his new clothes, he traveled to the castle of the king of that realm and entered it. Okay, okay. Now I know you're making this all up. That's simply impossible. But <laughs> you're absolutely right it is. I had to mad to even consider trying to pull that off. The Jordan? He just walked straight in. I don't blame you for doubting me. Damn, I would have been first to doubt a thing like that if I didn't see him doing it hundreds of times later with my own eyes. Anyway, he walked right into the castle. And once he was there... Followed through with his plan, which was bed and his wife. Whose wife? The king's. The king's wife? Mm-hmm. So the queen, indeed. So let me get this straight. The plan was to get into the castle and lay with the queen. Exactly that. You were right. This is the most absurdly idiotic plan I've ever heard of. I told you, but it worked like a charm. I still don't get it. What work? What has he accomplished by that? After the lovemaking, he dressed up, deliberately leaving his undergarments on the bedside, and told the queen he'll be right back with some refreshments. Then he went to the, one of the king's guards and told him that he saw the queen with a company of a strange man sneaking into one of the chambers. The guards rushed in and witnessed the queen naked in bed with man's clothing right next to her. As a loyal servant, the guard reported on the matter directly to the king himself, who, as you can probably imagine, became furious to the say the least. He couldn't really punish his wife, that would be bad for his reputation. But he could pursue her lover. Unfortunately for him, at this point, Jordan was long gone from the castle, riding a beautiful bay mare he borrowed from the stable into the Sussex. 
I still don't get it. You see, the king didn't catch the filthy seducer, but it didn't mean he couldn't track him down and find him. To do so, the only track he could follow was the one thing that Jordan left behind, except his undergarments and a pleasurable memory for the queen, his name. Not his real name, of course. The name he used when introducing himself to the queen was the Lord of the Orchards. Precisely, now you get it. Ah, uh, which one? That's incredible. Lord Sam must have promptly left the company's body pretty quickly. Ah, uh, didn't that get the Lord hanged? That seems pretty extreme. He didn't get killed. That wouldn't be in Yordan style. The queen begged for his life to be spared. So the king threw him in the dungeon where he spent all the days he had left. Yordan was amazing. All that with just the power of his wit and speech. He surely showed the Lord what he sh that he shouldn't have wronged him. Don't get me wrong. Don't get the wrong idea about his reasons. Yordan didn't get through all of that just because of what the Lord did to him. You see, the Lord was a cruel, merciless brute. He mistreated all of his subjects, killed for fun, raped for sport. People used to call him Laundry Man because one of his habits was drowning his bastards in the lake right after birth, like unwanted kittens. Yordan needed to stop him, and he did, but that's not the end of the story. After the Lord's capture, someone had to take his place. He didn't have any rightful successor, but then, with just an uncannily perfect timing, came a distant cousin of the Lord's, a charming young man with two different eyes. You have got to be kidding me. He easily acquired all possessions of his sentenced relative, but Yordan didn't want any of that, not for himself. So he took only three bags of coins from the treasury and left everything else in the hands of the peasant. They were elated. He is still probably worshipped there. I can tell you that. Oh, and one more thing. Why three bags, you might ask? That's easy. One for the tailor, another one for the stableman he took the horse from, and the last one for himself, with the exact amount of coins he was rightfully supposed to earn for his work at the orchard. I told you Yordan wasn't a thief, and that was that. He mounted his beautiful mare and left the realm, continuing his adventures. At least that's the story he used to tell us. So nothing of that may be true at all. <laughs> but that's just how it was with Jordan. I can't believe that you're talking about my uncle. My mother used to portray him as a simple merchant. Successful, but normal. Mortal. Yeah, I was wondering if he actually was mortal many times. Well, now we know. But wait, you didn't tell me what was the purpose of the Undying Fist. Oh, I thought it would be obvious now. On that day, Jordan's mission was born. He knew that the spoiled, rotten elites like that were scattered all around the world, draining life and dignity from the hard-working simple folk, and that he was capable of stopping them, to some extent at least. So that's exactly what he started doing, overthrowing corrupted lords and giving back to the community. Sounds like a hero, a true hero. Well, it wasn't like, I mean, yeah, yeah, I guess you could say that. So how did you join the pack? Jordan was working solo when he met Unigast. That rat's agile fingers could work where Jordan's tongue didn't. And then, they needed someone with other talents they were lacking, like strength, manliness, bravery, independence, gallantry, integrity. Right. Dude, I, I, I get the picture. So they recruited the best there was. I was. Between jobs at the time. So I gave them a chance, and finally the pack started to really make a difference. But I don't like to brag. Oh yes, I noticed. Humble to the bone. Thank you for noticing. <laughs> People at my level don't need to boast about our skills. Just like the sun needs to prove it's bright. Anyhow, I already spoke more words to you than I did in the last five years to anybody. So it's time for you to go, and preferably, don't come back. Ever. It was a great pleasure, and a true uh, Yeah, I don't care. Leave down. And in return for giving away my location, deliver this delicious meal to Unigas. It's his favorite, a knuckle sandwich. Um, do you want me to hit him in the face? Did I stutter? No, sir. Of course, sir. I'm on my way, sir. All right. That was something else, and, um, he spent the whole night with that man. I need, well, we could go back to Unigas, but one thing I want to check is Veronica and see if there's any people that we can recruit, because Stovia wasn't it. I don't want to really hunt any more boar or pig or anything else, so we're going to run on by. So it looks like there's a fire over there. And usually if there's a campfire, there's people, but I don't see them. 
Maybe I need to get a little closer? Because there's got to be someone there. Yep. All right. All right, let's go. Actually, this does not. Oh, they saw me. That's one. Switching over to the axe. Yeah. Get out of here. Oh, I was scared. I'm not gonna lie. Because I was like, I don't I don't have too much over here. So what do you add? A wine bottle? Some roasted meat? I'll take that. And 81 coin. That's not the best. Anyways, that's lame. Where's the other dude? Yeah, you got my arrows, my friend. You have to get that back. Wine bottle, some onions, and some apples. I'll take it. Fine, but I want my iron. Give me my arrow back, sir. Thank you. Did he? What, he just had like a cudgel on him? Lame. Didn't you have a knife? Can I have your knife? Those are some nice fur boots. I can't stake them off of you. I would definitely stole them off of you. You sneaks, I'm gonna need that. I really didn't think we would be encountering bandits until like the winter time, but here we are. Firewood? I need that. Definitely. For the, for the people? Oh, what's that? A f and a bag? Yes. Please. Wheat beer. Some more coin. That is amazing. Another beer bottle. Some more coins. Absolutely. I'd steal the, the fire if I could, but that's not... That's not a good thing, guys. You know, I'm not even mad that finding bandits was a thing. There's a lot of clay over here, too. Don't know if I need it just yet. But we're gonna go over here to Barana. We're not that far off. Hopefully, they'll have some people for me. Um, I wrote down in my notes. Um, Let's see, what where are my notes at? Where are my notes? We need two men and three ladies in this village to uh, boost up some of these population with all the food that I'm making. That definitely seems to be the case. The water will have to be managed better. I don't think we're gonna have enough water for that, but here we are. I can't believe we didn't take that much damage either. All right, who's here? You've got one, three. The rest of you is not that great. All right, so let me let me look around. Let me look around. Let me look around. Do I even have a spot for you? We've got two people in the ice. Extraction. She could be at the well. We need people that know how to fill up some water. Fishing hunt. Even though it's under hunting, it's not. All right, sewing. All right, storage. We could work in the farm shed. I don't really think that's going to be great for her. She's going to work the well. How is life treating you? Um, it's good. Actually, let's let's romance her. Seem interesting. What's your biggest dream? I don't dream big. One might say I dream, don't dream at all. Because I'd rather have goals to actually achieve than dreams to wish for. And my main goal is to work as hard as I can to build the best life possible. Alright. Um... I'm always eager to learn new things. I don't know. Let's do that. Do you have any advice for me? Be careful who you trust. The best way to conceal a dagger is with a smile. And don't let me find you slacking off. Alright. Um. Work can often get on our sin. What are you doing in your spare time? If you have any spare time, it only means you've been slacking off. That seems... She seems like most of the people that I've met. So actually, never mind. And we're going to send her off. There we go. Anybody else over here that... Nah, she's on the way. Let me go and put her in a house. Empty house. Let's see. We can go put in here. And then we can give her a job. Or... We could make her a... Water carrier. She'll be great at it. It's not going to be that great. We could also make her a fisher. 
I'm gonna make her a fisher. She might not be the best at it, but she'll she'll live for right now. We need to work on our food production, etc. Um, there we go. That's one lady down. Wouldn't say that was the best we have to offer, but you know it's better than nothing. Um. I probably need to chop down some more trees, make some new places. Um, don't really want to upgrade everybody's house to the to the small house because that gives a very huge population boom after a while. And though I'm making a lot of food right now, it might prove to be a little difficult later. So let's get over here. We need more arrows, in my opinion. Let's get ourselves to the next town. Uh, so we sold some stuff. I forgot that I paused the menu to go look around. And we end up increasing our coin by about 1,200, because I think we're at a, we were at 615 gold. So now we're at 1880. We're a little bit over that. And you know what? I'm thinking this is where I'm going to end the episode with us on the road to find new people with a new person in our midst, which is very good. We learn more about our Uncle Jordan. It's been a great time. So if you like the video, hit the like button. If you'd like to see more, hit the subscribe button. If you want to stay on the up and up on everything we do on this channel, go ahead and hit that notification bell. If it's your birthday, happy birthday. Eat some cake. Live it up. Other than that, peace.